Hello everybody, in this video we're going to do a quick review for the APCSP written exam. And the topic we're covering today is compression. All right, let's get going. Realistically, there are only going to be one or two compression questions on the exam. On the other hand, they are all pretty much the same and you can absolutely study for them and have a really good chance to get them correct. So first, I'm going to go over compression super quick. I'm assuming you've seen these concepts all before. Compression means smaller files and smaller files are good because smaller files means that you have more space on your phone or your computer. And small files also mean that it's faster to send a file over the internet. A smaller file is faster to send. There's two kinds of compression, loss less and loss C, and we're gonna compare the two right now. Loss less compression, the most important thing about it is that it's reversible. So what this means is it's a temporary compression for storage or for transmission, but it's temporary. Before you use that file again, you're gonna restore it 100% back exactly the same as it was before with the same pixels if it's a picture, and the same quality if it's audio. Again, the most important thing is that it's reversible. Velocity compression is not reversible. So the compression is permanent. It's permanently worse, and you hope that that permanently worse is still good enough. You're gonna have fewer pixels if it's a picture or a movie. Worse sound quality, and you can't bring it back. It's permanently worse. So I'll summarize all this by saying lossless compression is reversible. Remember that. So you may wonder why you would ever use lossy compression, and here's why. It's because with lossy compression, you can compress a lot. Lossless compression usually is only gonna give you a little bit of compression. So on the exam, you might get a question asking, what kind of compression should I use? Just remember, lossless is reversible. Lossy means you get big compression. The other concept you might need to know has to do with mechanisms. So lossless compression, the mechanism is to find a pattern. So if I have AAABB, I can rewrite that as 3A2B and save characters, which saves me space. Compression. Lossy mechanism, basically you're just changing or removing data so that the fact that the file is smaller and has less information is not noticeable. Less important data, so that even though it's not quite as good, you can still tell what's going on. So I'm gonna review right now pretty much everything you need to know to answer all the questions. Compression makes your file smaller and faster to transmit. Lossless compression is reversible. Lossy compression means you can get big compression. And finally, if you have patterns in your data, you can get lossless compression. This question comes from code.org and it basically takes out all the vowels from a text message. All right, so let's look at this with the concepts we just went over. For A, we're gonna use the concept that lossless equals reversible. Is this lossless? Well, WRD, is that word or word? You cannot be 100% sure, so it's loss E. That makes A false, and that means A is the one you are looking for. But let's look at the rest of them also. B, we're gonna use the fact that compression makes things smaller. Is this compression? Yes, it is, because it's smaller. So B is true, and it's not the answer we're looking for. We're gonna use the lossless equals reversible concept, but it's really just the opposite of A, so it is, again, not the one we are looking for. For D, we're gonna use the fact that compression means faster internet transmission. So D is true, and so it's not the one we're looking for. The answer we're looking for here is A, because A is false, and we're looking for the one that's false. The question is basically asking when I would prefer lossy compression. For A, we're gonna use the concept lossless equals to reversible. So answer A is basically describing a lossless situation, and that's not lossy, so A is wrong. For B, we're gonna use the fact that lossy equals big compression. So if I'm short on space and I need maximum space, that does fit. C describes basically a reversible compression. For me to know 100% what that is after it's compressed, that means I can reverse it. So reversibility is associated with lossless compression, and that's not what I'm looking for in this question. The last one, when I have unlimited internet bandwidths, for D, we're gonna use the concept that lossy compression means big compression, and compression means faster internet transmission. Lossy compression would make my picture quality worse, but I could get big compression and send my files over the internet much, much faster. But you know what? In this case, I don't need to make that trade because I have unlimited bandwidth. So D is not correct. So the final answer for this one is B. Next question. My teacher compresses a class video and sends it to me. The video quality is not as good as when I watch the video in class. What is the likely reason for this degradation in quality? For the first answer A, 
we're going to use the concept that lossless is reversible. So if the teacher compresses the video with lossless compression, it should be 100% reversible and I should be able to see it in its original quality. And this is not true according to the question. So it's not A. B is a little bit of a trick. You will learn about undecidable problems in this course, but it is not related to this question. C is possible, but really you want to think about the concepts that the AP board wants you to learn and sending the wrong file is not related to that. D is really the opposite of A. If the teacher compresses the file with loss of compression, we're going to use the same concept, which is that lossless is reversible. So if lossless is reversible, that means lossy is not reversible. And not reversible means that after compression, my picture or video will be worse. That matches with what the question is asking. So the answer you're looking for is D. Next question. One of these is a lossless transformation of my image, which? So every so often, in the practice questions I've seen anyway, you might see a question that looks like this. It's almost not even about compression. It really just wants you to know the difference between lossless and loss C. So again, remember lossless means it's reversible. So we're gonna apply this to every single question. A, drop every 10th pixel. So right away, you know, if you just drop pixels, that's gonna be lossy. So it's not lossless. Dropping every 10th pixel is not reversible. So it's lossy. B, invert every color by subtracting each value from 255. So the question you're asking is whether this is reversible, and it is, because to get the original value, you would subtract your new value from 255. So it is reversible, which means it's lossless, and your answer is B. C, convert your image to gray by averaging the RGB values. So if you have three numbers and you average them, you cannot go backwards. The concept that we're using on this one is whether it is reversible, and it is not reversible, so it's not C. The last one, a mod. Mods, which you may need to know for another part of the exam, are not reversible. An example would be like this. If I do an 11 mod 10, that's equal to one. If I do a 21 mod 10, that is also equal to one. And so I don't know for sure, where did I start with? Did I start with 11? Did I start with 21? Did I start with 201? I don't really know. So I can't go back and forth. It's not reversible and not reversible means it's loss E. So the only one out of these that's reversible is the inversion, that's B. Next question, we're saying one of these is true about compression. A, lossy compression can be used for pictures and video only. Well, we just gave an example where it was used for text and you could use it for music as well. But if you weren't sure, you could hold off on this one until you found one that was better. B. B is asking about chunking files to send over the internet. The concept that we're using is that lossy compression gives big compression, and big compression is good if you want to send something over the internet more quickly. So this really doesn't make any sense, so we're going to say it's not B. For C, we're going to use the concepts that lossy compression is big compression, and compression means that you can save space on your phone or your hard drive. So from that point of view, C is definitely correct. It is not the only way. You could use lossless compression to shrink files to put on your phone, but in practice, most compression that's used to shrink videos or music is lossy. So C is correct. For D, we're gonna use the concept that lossy compression is big compression and lossless compression is reversible. So the idea that lossless compression is always the best is not true. Sometimes it's the best. It's the best if you need big compression, but if you need reversibility, then lossless compression is the best. So D is not correct. So the answer for this problem is C. Sometimes you'll see a question like this where they're asking just about loss, less compression. And the concept that we're gonna use is that the more patterns you have, the more lossless compression you're gonna have. So I'll give you a bunch of examples. And the one where you can find the most repeating patterns is the one that's gonna be the most losslessly compressible. In this case, I've written them all out. C is gonna be the most losslessly compressible because it's got the longest repeating pattern. Last question is, one of these is most true about compression, which? So for A, we're gonna use the concept that lossless is reversible. So if lossless is reversible, uh, loss C is not reversible. So A is wrong. For B, we're gonna use that same concept. The answer is saying that a compressed video has the same number of pixels. That would not be the case if it were reversible. If it's reversible, when you compress it, the file will be smaller, but when you play it back, you're bringing it back to its original size with the same number of pixels. 
So B is not true because a lossy compression is not going to have the same number of pixels as it originally had. One thing you want to realize is that with a lossless transformation, you're usually bringing it back to its original form right before you use it. So don't forget that. For C, the concepts we need are that lossless compression is reversible and lossy compression gives you big amounts of compression. So C is not true because if we need big compression, we need to use loss C. D, the concept is the one we just saw that lossy compression gives you big compression. So this is true. So if you need a lot of space and you're desperately short of space by any means possible, then lossy compression is the way you're going to want to go. All right, so there you go. Four basic concepts and six practice questions. And hopefully you'll ace any compression question when it comes your way. All right, so if that was useful to you, please give me a like and a subscribe. Thank you very much.